Yeah, my name is Jing Hua Mao. I'm a PhD student at UCLA. So sorry for the waiting. So I'm very glad today to talk about our work of deep captioning with multimodal recurrent neural network. Um, so this this is a joint work with uh, with Battle Research and UCLA, and I'm very glad to work with Wei Yi Jiang and Ella for this project. And uh, as you can see in the screen, the major task uh, the major task of this work is to present uh, uh, present a system that can generate free style uh, sentence sentence captions of an image. For example, for the images on screen, uh, it will generate like a close look up a ball of a food on a table. Um, so here is the abstract. Generally, we, we present one model which will be which achieves state-of-the-art performance for three tasks. The first task is a deep deep image captioning generation task, which is the major task of this work. And we also use the model to three additional tasks. Uh, it's, a, it's a retrieval task. The first retrieval task is a sentence retrieval task, um, giving image queries. And the and second retrieval task is sentence uh, is the image retrieval task, giving query uh, giving query sentences. And you can see that, uh, know that the, the sentence retrieval task is different from the image caption generation task because in the sentence retrieval task we need to retrieve a sentence that existing in the, that already exists in the database. In the first, in the first task we need to generate a free star uh, of image captions. Um, so our model has three components. The first, the first component is a deep, uh, recurrent neural network, and the second component is a convolutional neural network. And we have a multimodal layer that connects these two components together. OK, so let's take a look at this, uh, this model architecture. Um, so as I mentioned before, the, the model has three parts. The first is the recurrent neural network. Uh, it has uh, two word embedding layers, which maps the the dense world, uh, the, the, the hot, one hot representation of a world to a dense world representation space, and we feed that representation to the to the to the recurrent layer. And the second component is a convolutional neural network, where we get image representations and feed that representation to the model. And uh, there is a multimodal layer that combines these two components together, and we build a softmax layer on top of the multimodal layer to model the probability distribution. Of next word. So the model takes the input of uh, images and its, uh, um, its sentence descriptions. So the sentence description can be represented by a sequence of words, W1 to WL. Um, so we add a star sign and an sign of every training sentence in, uh, in the database. Um, so maybe more specifically, specifically let, let us look at uh, some models in the rectangle. So these some models, uh, in this sub model, we take the current world as input, and the model is trained to predict the next world. Um, so because this is a recurrent neural network structure, so the weight are shared among all the sub models. Okay. And here is some detailed calculation of the recurrent layer and the multimodal layer. Uh, for, the recur for, for the recurrent layer, we, uh, the, here time frame t means the order of word in a sentence. So the, recur uh, the activation of the recurrent layer at time t is the function of activation of recurrent layer for the previous time, and uh, also the word embeddings. Here. And the plus here means the element wise plus. And for the multimodal layer, it takes three, three inputs. The first is the word embedding layer, the second is the recurrent layer, and the third is the uh, multimodal layer. We just map these three inputs into the same multimodal space and add them together. Okay. And we use two nonlinear functions in the model. Uh, the first nonlinear function is a rectified linear unit. Um, we use it for the recurrent layer, and uh, it provides uh, it provides a faster convergence rate than other nonlinear activation function in our cross validation experiment, and uh, it somehow um, lower down the risk of the gradient explosion or vanishing problem in the recurrent neural network. And uh, for the for the other layers like word embedding layers and multimodal layers, we use the uh, we use the scaled hyperbolic tangent function as the nonlinear function. 
So the output of the model will be a probability, will be a conditional probability, which is the probability of current world given previous world and the images. And this probability will be very important for, and we will use it for the three tasks. Okay. So here I'm going to talk about how to use the model to do the three tasks. For the image caption generation task, uh, it's actually very straightforward. We first input the uh, a star sign of the of the word into the model, and and sample sampling the sampling the next word from the probability distribution output by the model, uh, and the sampling could be simply we, we select the best word with the maximum probability, or we can use a beam search scheme like we keep a uh, top k words each time. Okay, so this and we can repeatedly send this process until the model generates and sign. Okay, so this is straightforward. And uh, the and the application of this model to the next uh, retrieval task, the image retrieval task is also straightforward. Um, so we can define a ranking score, which is the probability of the uh, which is a probability of which is the probability of this of the data of the query sentence giving the database images. And this probability can be calculated by from the from the equations I showed here, um, and we can we can just rank the database images according to this ranking score, and we output the top ranked images. Okay, so let's talk about the last task. The last task is a sentence retrieval task giving query images, and this task is a little bit trickier because we cannot use the same ranking score as we used for the second second task. And there are lots of problems. The, the in, particular, in particular, some sentence might have a very high probability giving any image queries. And uh, if, we, uh, if we didn't do anything to the, to the probability, the system will continuously output the same sentence again and again. So what we did is that we normalized the, the probability by the marginal probability of the, of the uh, database sentences. And this marginal probability can be easily calculated by sampling images from the training set and calculate the probability, condition probability of that sentence giving the image. And uh, here we can just trade the probability of the, of the data set images as a constant. We ignore this term in the calculation. Okay, so, so you might have a question that why we need to trade different from this task. So intuitively, this task is, um, is a symmetric to the image retrieval task. Um, and we show here that uh, the, this normalized probability is actually symmetric to the ranking score we use for image retrieval. Um, so this, this, ranking, uh, this normalized probability is actually equals to the, to the probability of query, query image given data, database sentences if we treat the probability of the database images constant. So actually we are using a, a symmetric ranking score for this task. So this is how we apply this model to the three tasks. And here are some ex uh, experimental results. Uh, the results are just reported by the deadline of this paper. So I guess uh, all the competing method was getting better results these days, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are trying to get better results too. But um, from this result, we can still think that, uh, we can see that our method is consistently outperforming the competing method. Um, and we use uh, the evaluation metrics we use is the uh, I-K, which is the um, record rate of the ground truth sentence or images g given the top K retrieval candidates. And we also report the median rank of the top ranked uh, of top ranked ground truth. Um, so generally, better uh, higher the higher the I-K, the better performance. And the lower the median rank, the better performance. Uh, okay, here's the result for sentence sentence generation. Uh, so we we using uh, here we using the blue scores and perplexity as uh, as um, measurement. Okay, and we also we also evaluate the method on the Microsoft Coco testing set. Uh, and uh, here we compare the result of our method uh, of our method with beam search and without beam search, uh, and um, and it seems that the beam search will increase the performance, and the performance of method is actually very close to the performance of humans, and we are, we are working on uh, 
getting a better, better system in this task. Uh, so here are some discussions. Uh, so I guess this system, uh, we, are, we are still the first group to doing the system I, we are going to show, show later is a, a Chinese captioning system. And uh, actually, we're using a very similar, very similar model for, for this system, and, uh, and it, it works pretty well. Uh, so to make, to, to make that, uh, to, to let us figure out what the system is really doing, I, I input the sentence into the online translator, and here is the all translated English word. You can see that the performance is really good. And here's another uh, interesting topics uh, and extensions. So, uh, so we know that uh, child can, uh, so as when we were very young, we are actually learning, uh, learning, the new, new, uh, learning the new concept by seeing the visual world and listening to the description of our parents. And the process could be slow at the beginning, but it was getting faster later after we accumulate enough learn, learn concept. So as a graduate student in machine learning, I dream of designing a system that can learn lower concept uh, from a few examples. And in practice, as a student in engineering, I, I do not want to retrain a, a very large model every time we have a few images with new concept. So here is our effort. We, we, pro we propose a method that will make your uh, image captioning model efficiently enlarge the vocabulary. More specifically, uh, our method allows you to uh, learn new concepts from a few images, and it takes you only a few minutes to retrain your model. And we provide data set for, for, for the evaluation, okay? and which will be released very soon. OK, so, so that's basically all of my presentation. OK, thank you. For more details, you can. OK, so just one sentence. For more details, you can visit the project page. OK, do you have any questions? Yeah, so let's come back to this to this figure. Uh, so uh, we have a better performance for blue scores uh, in this figure, and the blue scores is like um, a capogram precision of the of the sentences. And you know that a human might tend to use um, use a different style of sentence to describe the same image, and which will lead to a slightly lower blue score. Uh, but uh, I mean. I, I think our system is still not outperforming humans because uh, you, you can see that for some of the evaluation metrics, we are still lower than the humans, and um, and uh, I think I think maybe maybe we are still getting on a better performance, a better evaluation evaluation score that, that can measure the task even better than the task showing here, and uh, I guess maybe the most. Uh, uh, the most uh, objective, uh, not most objective, maybe the most correctly evaluation is the, we can evaluate the method by humans, which I guess the Microsoft Cocoa team was uh, putting effort on it. John? Hi. Okay, so uh, I guess the first lesson is that the image feature is really important. So when we change from NXNet to, to a very uh, deep neural network like VGGNet, which will be presented later, uh, we, we get the performance uh, increase a lot. The performance increase a lot. And another thing is that uh, I still believe that uh, in, in our system, the, the visual information was fit later than the recurrent layer. I still believe that this is a better utilization of the recurrent information, and uh, it allows you to use uh, uh, better image features, and you can do it in something like uh, attentional model, where there is a paper of uh, Montreal and Toronto talking about. Um, and, uh, I, and I think that uh, 
the size of the recurrent layer actually doesn't matter too much. We have experience with, uh, with 50, uh, 500 dimension of recurrent layer and uh, 200 dimension of recurrent layer. Actually, the performance are actually very similar to each other. And I also tried to replace the iron here with the LSTM. Um, so in our experiment, it did increase the performance, but uh, the, the increased performance is not very large. OK. Uh, I guess that's basically the lessons. And we are still developing a better systems. Maybe, maybe we will show the better system later. Okay. You have to run the RNN with uh, all of the Yes. I, I, guess, I, I guess the retrieval, uh, the problem of this method for retrieval is that we need to scan all the, all the database images. Um, so the, the simplest way is that we can use some other method like the, like, like, like the embedding method, which is they find the the similarity, uh, which they map the images and sentences into the same, uh, same embedding space and calculate the equivalent distance between these two things. And uh, because it's an uh, equivalent distance, it can be accelerated. So I guess we can just get a rough pool of sentences by this method, and then we can use, this, use our method to, to re-rank the, 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 top, the top ranked candidates. Thanks. Thank you, Mao. Okay.